This episode of Analog Resurgence brought to you by Skillshare. Stick around after the video to learn more. Fujichrome Provia 400X, a 400 ISO slide film that Fuji discontinued. This is one of those films that is probably on the list of things people would like to see brought back if Fuji was to bring back a film, or even just something similar. Unfortunately, there's not a huge amount of people shooting color reversal film anymore. So it's definitely a very, very small audience that isn't necessarily the most profitable. For those of you keeping track, there is no longer a pro color reversal 400 ISO film in production by anyone these days. Current choices for shooting this stuff are Provia 100, Velvia 50, and Velvia 100, and Ektachrome 100 from Kodak. Sometimes you'll see things like Film Photography Project just had retrochrome, and that's just like old or expired Ektachrome. But for like quality E6 films, Fuji and Kodak are the ones doing it. Okay, as I was uh, working on this video, Fuji decided to announce that they were going to uh, discontinue Velvia 100 slide film in the United States due to environmental guidelines. So you can buy Velvia 50, Provia 100, and still uh, Velvia 100, and Ektachrome 100. But soon, Velvia 100 might uh, disappear. This roll of Provia 400 comes to me courtesy of my friend Anna, who also lent me this Canon FD 20mm f2.8 lens. So a nice wide angle lens that I've been playing around with for a while. So why does a 400 ISO color reversal film matter? It doesn't if you don't shoot color reversal film, which is a shame because it's very, very lovely and uh, expensive and it could definitely use a, a boost in, in uh, numbers probably. 400 ISO just means a little more versatility, especially when color reversal requires, you know, a little more precise exposure. You can get away with less. So of course some low light shooting, but also just uh, use outdoors and being able to shoot with bigger depth of fields and faster shutter speeds, a little more flexible outside of uh, 50 or 100, which can be limiting. So Fuji discontinued Provia 400 in 2013, which is just after Kodak also discontinued all of their slide film stuff. 2013 Fuji killed both Provia 400 and their black and white Neopan 400 as well. So not like a great year for Fuji. It would be nice if somebody brought out a 400 ISO slide film, but it would either have to be Fuji bringing something back, which I'm not sure will happen, or Kodak bringing out a 400 ISO version of Ektachrome, which is maybe possible, but also Kodak is kind of spotty in terms of how reliable they are and uh, what they seem to be capable of these days. I've also got a Bell & Howell FD mount 150mm lens. I'd like an 85 for this Canon, but uh, the Canon FD 85 lens itself is quite expensive to a point where I can't justify that, and I just kind of want to take like somewhat flattering pictures of people. And outdoors with a decent amount of space, a 150 is not too bad for that. So I wanna play around with that a little bit too. Pretty dramatic, the light. She's got her own camera tucked away over there. What's in there? Ultramax? Um. Lomography. Lomo, yeah. So in terms of Provia 400 itself, it was a medium speed color reversal film by Fuji. And according to Fuji, they employed Epitaxial Sigma Crystal technology for a nice fine grain on a 400 ISO film. Fuji's Velvia stocks are usually pretty saturated and contrasty, and Provia stocks are usually less so. They're less saturated, they're usually at least a little more realistic.
I've been shooting the Pro V400 at 400, so box speed. The thing with like expired uh, slide film is that it doesn't really go by, you know, the, the rule that a lot of people are kind of used to now, which is just overexpose more and more for how old it is. With slide film, a lot of the time it's just kind of, uh, if it's expired, if it's gone, it's gone. So even overexposing like uh, a stop or two stops on this stuff, I could just end up in even worse results than if I just shot it at box speed. And of course it's being processed as E6 color reversal processing. So I will get slides back from this roll of slide film. There are a lot of people who will cross process reversal film, so doing it as a negative, and it allows for just a different variety of like color shifts, contrast, some different uh, unexpected and sometimes experimental results. But I am uh, super not a fan of that. And I will always process slide film as a reversal whenever I have the opportunity to. And now here I am a couple weeks later with the actual slides back and one of the things that of course I love about slides is being able to project them. It's not going to be for everybody of course and it's perfectly fine to shoot slide film for the look of it and the saturation and the contrast and everything but picking up a slide projector is usually not too expensive in my experience and I can also have my stuff slide mounted when I take it into the lab as well. So it's always kind of really cool to actually put things in the projector, dim the lights, and just like watching a movie with 16 millimeter Super 8 projectors, actually be able to see what you've shot projected on a wall, like right in front of you. So of course, this kind of pales in comparison to actually if you were all here in my uh, living room, uh, which uh, would be pretty uncomfortable for me, but uh, I thought it would be a great kind of end to the video. Big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video today. Skillshare is a massive online learning community that is dedicated to offering a huge variety of courses covering an enormous amount of topics so that you can explore and broaden your horizons and your creativity. It's curated and organized really well and helps you to learn and understand and grow different skills. It has no ads and it's always launching brand new premium content. It's also less than $10 a month with an annual subscription and you can use it if you're interested in learning more about programs like Premiere Pro and After Effects and Photoshop, all the stuff I use in these videos as well as learning more about such a huge variety of creative topics and subjects. So many of the skills and the programs that I use to create the videos that you're watching are things that you can learn so much about by checking out Skillshare. So the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description of this video will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Thanks for watching this video. Uh, I've been on Toronto Island for shooting some of this and it is gorgeous today before it gets too, too hot in the city this summer. You can check the links uh, down below. All this stuff is also over on the Patreon, which really helps to support this channel. There's also merch, which I'm not wearing today, but uh, trust me, it's there. You can look down in the description for that stuff as well. And as always, uh, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon.